I am Ellie Pearson, that is my proper Christian name is Elke, it's German, but I'm called Ellie because I was getting fed up <laughs> about when I used Elke, everybody said, what? <laughs> and I'm Trish Spence, and um, I live in Bury, and um, I've been involved with the workshop and the Loch Gallery, but not quite as long as Ellie. No. <laughs> I lived for 45 years in St. Margaretsville, and last November I moved to Kirkwood. I was a maker. I was a potter, made pots on the wheel. So I found myself in a small village, and there was Rosie, a weaver, and Peter, a woodcarver. And we, you know, you can't avoid when you live in a little village like St. Margaret's Hope uh, to meet them all the time. So we noticed that we had the same interest, like we wanted to set up a cooperative that was would be there primarily for the makers to give the makers a good price because we found there was a distinct lack of good prices for your products. Uh, usually the people who own the shops, that was one of our reasons to make it a cooperative because, well, there wasn't really the possibility of buying anywhere. We needed to rent because we all didn't have any money. So. And you paid very stupid rent, didn't you? Pardon? You paid very stupid rent. Tell them about the rent. Oh, yeah. We found this derelict building, an old stone building, which used to be the bakehouse the old bakehouse, uh, and the baker was somebody brown. And his relatives were just living in St. Margaret's Cottage at then, at that time. And they were only too pleased that we would do it up. It, I mean, it really was derelict nearly. It needed new windows, new door, blah, blah, blah. And what do you do when you don't have any money? But the thing is, we all did up our own houses, so we had surplus material, which we put in. <laughs> We worked in our own little workshops or at home, uh, and, uh, well, there came a time when there weren't enough people left, so I had to move. Thankfully, the workshop was a big room and a small room of it, and I, I moved my pottery into that small room. And you used the post office window, I seem to remember, to display your goods. That's right, yes. We were lucky there. The, the woman was very nice. So once we had converted this derelict building into a, an acceptable building for, the, for a shop, we had to go up to the owners and and ask what they wanted for rent, of course. And the, it was owned by Fred and Bella Brown. And they wanted a pound 
a week or a month. I can't remember that now. And the thing is, we couldn't afford it. So his answer was, you can't take the truths of a healer man. Of course, I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> but I asked and was told. So, yeah, they were really a wonderful couple that supported us in every way they possibly can. Bella was a fantastic knitter. They were farmers. And, uh, yeah. So it was Bella who really started the knitting side off, didn't she? She and no, I suppose Barbara really. Curry. Did she come No, in no, no. It was a woman who lived in near Randall. Oh, right. Constable. Her oh, name Barbara. Was. Barbara Constable. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Icelandic jerseys. Yes, we started off with Icelandic jerseys. The wool was thick, so it wouldn't take long to knit. In fact, we had one knitter, Hattie Kobo. That's right. She knitted two a week at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Hand knitted. Oh, dear. For local knitters, it, it became a very important outlet because people could actually get paid decently for their work. So that was, yeah, that was brilliant. And of course, knit, knitwear was very had become very big in Orkney then as well. So that was excellent, wasn't it? Yes, that's true. They had to be sold for well over a hundred pounds or well over a hundred and fifty even. Uh, when you are in London, that was okay, but up here, it's a different matter. But then there are people, tourists, who come here who are really into the hand knitting still. In fact, I hear this year has been a fantastic year for selling hand knitted jumpers in the workshop. We then moved from the back road to the front road. Mm -hmm. It became um, a bit more sophisticated, I suppose, then. And, but on the other hand, then, people weren't actually... In the old um, workshop, there were quite a few of us who actually went were producing because we, we actually used the upstairs after a bit. So mm -hmm. there were one or two of us sort of up there doing, doing different things, different crafts. Yes, um, there was Patty with her, her rolled uh, earrings. I did prodded rugs for a while. So someone else did fatigue. Yeah. So it was, it, um, uh, and there was someone else doing pottery as well, actually, up there. So in a way, it was still very much a producer's cooperative. But now, now it is, but the producers are producing in their own homes and, and then in their own, or in their own workshops. In their own workshops, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's become... Slightly different, really. People have become so affluent that they could open their own workshops. And we suffered from that, in a way. It's not privately owned. And it's a collaboration between... The committee now, I think, is eight people. Possibly eight people, or yeah. something like that, yes. So it's always been, I think, at the lowest four or five producers, and then others joined who were interested in crafts. But I think this, because... It's not privately owned. You then all of a sudden, when it's a cooperative, you have got several people's tastes. And, uh, yeah, to choose what you sell. If you do a cooperative, you have, you're sharing a, a place usually and ideas, of course. But, yeah, get to know the people very well before you commit yourself to a space. 
I've always been a sort of a bossy person, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it, I think it makes a huge it, it makes a huge difference. Although, I mean, we're both we don't really work in the workshop anymore, do we? No, but we're still interested in it. Yeah, and we still know everyone that works there. Yeah, and that we've got we've made friends for life. You know, and we've had we have workshop art, outings and workshop parties, and in the winter time we all used to gather together and knit together and things like that. So socially, it's been absolutely fantastic, and it still is, yeah. you know, for, for everybody who's involved in it, I think. It just happened to be where we lived, you know? And I think, uh, I think also that a, a lot of artists and craftspeople, and actually the young returning who've been away to college and coming back, um, yeah. have, have made a huge difference to the sort of artistic um, number mm. of people who are, who have come to live up here. And they are managing to earn a living, even though sometimes they might have two or three jobs. They're, they're managing to do their, their crafts and art, which is brilliant. Yeah, that's true. At Civil Art Gallery, um, even though people are sort of buying, they always buy the paintings and things, they're still coming downstairs and having a wander around the workshop, and I think it's made a big difference to, to the sales. It did, yeah. And it has been a, a terrific outlet for local artists mm. as well. Yes, absolutely. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, I think they all, they all back us, and they, they, they all enjoy exhibiting there because the light up there is fantastic. Yes, that's and it's not too big, so you can, people can have single exhibitions without it being, you know, overwhelming. So we've had mixed exhibitions and yeah, always mixed ones at Christmas and things, haven't we? Yeah. The reason that Rosie and I set up the workshop and Peter Leach, but I don't know, I didn't know his attitude towards socialism. Rosie and I were both of the same mind. We were socialists, so so it was the thing to do to open a cooperative that was there for the producers. And then unfortunately times changed up here big way too. It became much more affluent than it was in I came to Orkney in 1974. I came to Scotland in 72 and married a Scot in Glasgow. So, yeah, that's what got me here. And I think also that there were the, when, when we came up, we first came up, I actually came up with a knitting machine. Now, I was knitting um, in, in Oxford. And I brought my knitting machine up with me. Um, but we, myself and my partner, we knitted for, for um, the Celtic knitwear. And, and then, of course, there was Scapa knitwear as well. And they, they paid pretty badly. Uh, and I can, we, we used to sit up all night doing the finishing and things, you know. So to actually have an outfit like the workshop, to actually put our work into, you know, and the people are also um, beginning to do to create their own patterns and things, which was you know yeah. that was that was quite new in itself. Yeah, that's true. But Bella was such an experienced knitter. Oh, she was fantastic. Wasn't yeah, she, she yeah. really was. Yes, and she remembered all those fishermen's patterns and what have you. Yeah. So that was very nice to do that, actually, and have the opportunity to do it with others. You know, that was lucky, really. But it's lasted a very long time. Yes, we just had our 40th anniversary in 2018. Hooray!